Hey guys, Sean here from s &P. Today here with Jamie Smith, head chef at Abode Hotels. He's gonna be showing you how to chop veg and fruit in different ways. So guys, we've got uh, some different uh, fruits and vegetables here that you may come across on a regular basis. I'm gonna show you the different ways of uh, cutting them. So I'll start off with a courgette. So uh, one way you could cut this, maybe into little squares. So if you're gonna cut it into little squares, Obviously, that's the cylinder shape at the moment. Makes it easier if you square it, square it off. So what I mean by that is just make a flat ledge, and then then it's easier to cut a shorter distance. So then I'll put that flat edge on the bench and square off that side. And it's important always to keep your uh, board clear, so because you don't want stuff on your board, and then maybe they catch the end of the knife, cut your hand, and then trip to any. You can cut the squares as big as you want, but generally people's problem is that you want a quick meal. So obviously the smaller you cu cut it, the quicker it's gonna cook. So, and then it's however, however many you, you wanna manage. Usually I wouldn't cut all them to four and stack them on top because it can get a bit messy. So maybe two at a time, and then you go lengthways, and then turn it, straighten it up. And then you've got a little dice. So another way of cutting a courgette is what's called, you may have heard, a baton. So it's like little, well, they're not really matched sticks, just like little sticks like that. Or if you wanted to go to town, you could do what's called a julienne. You may have heard of that. So it's basically a bit thinner. So again, things like stir fries, and the veg is a bit thinner and cooks quicker. Another way you could do it, just cut it, I've seen people do it, cut it into rounds. You could even do char grilled vegetables with that or roasted vegetables because it's quite uh, thick, it'll uh, you know, hold its shape a bit better. Cut it into bigger chunks or whatever and then char grill them like that, roast them. Carrots are quite difficult to chop, partly because they're quite hard, so your knife, it's hard to keep your knife straight while going through it. But anyway, obviously you need to, you don't necessarily have to always peel a carrot first of all. Sometimes I just, for speed, I just square it off, but I'll peel it for this video. So this is, again, why it's important to have a speed peeler, so you can peel it fast. So again, I could do uh, similar cuts to the courgette, but I'll just show you another way of cutting, which is good for uh, speed. Like I was saying, the smaller something is, the quicker it's gonna cook. So if you're in a rush, this is one way I like to cut my carrots. So it's quite quick and easy. And then also carrots usually take quite long to cook, but this way will cook a lot quicker. And uh, as you get down to the end, maybe don't worry too much about using the whole carrot and just either keep that for a stock or bin it. Cutting them into batons, like I did before with a courgette. And again, get away with uh, roasting them as they were a bit uh, thicker. So here we've got a red pepper. Generally, when I use red pepper in cooking, it's generally for a stir fry, but uh, one way you could do it, it's for a different meal idea, is take the top off, scoop out the insides, and then you could stuff that with uh, different ingredients, put the lid back on, roast it, and that could be a, put the lid back on, roast it, and that could be a one meal you could cook. I'll show you different ways of cutting that now. So, Usually I cut it, so I stand it up straight, and just depending on how many like sides it has, vary from three to four, just cut down them like that. And I tend to not worry about that bit at the bottom, but if you're really hungry, I suppose you can eat it. And what I like to do with the pepper now is obviously it's got like this inner sort of sinewed or skin, I usually uh, 
cut that off. So I sort of go in a little bit and try and press the knife against the bottom of the pepper and sort of like try and keep it parallel with the pepper. And you sort of like almost like peeling the inside. And then that creates a flatter base. So again, like most things, you could probably either dice it or slice it. Uh, I always I always cut through the skin side first, partly because obviously you've created that flat base. It keeps it a bit more stable. And then uh, again, dice it. Or another way is again slice it. So again, you can peel the inside, but this this isn't essential. And depending on how long you want your slices, you can either keep them full length. half length. Again, slicing is generally quicker than dicing, so if you're making something, I don't know, a mince dish or whatever, that might be a quicker and more efficient way to cut, doing smaller slices. So here we've got a leek. Again, there's, like most things, a lot of things you can do with a leek, but generally I like to julienne it because it cooks quicker. So Cut your leek into manageable slices, it all depends on the size of your knife. So this knife's quite small, so I'll cut it into a smaller chunk like that. And then I cut it in half. I take the couple of inner layers out. Again, so that creates a flat base. Leeks are generally quite dirty, so you can you always uh, wash them afterwards. One thing when chopping as well, is it's important to do a thing, it's almost called like the claw kind of thing. So you're keeping your fingers quite flat. So when the blade's running along it, there's less chance of you being able to cut yourself as well. And also tuck your thumb in behind that because you don't really want your thumb sticking out and taking off the end of your thumb. So it's always important to keep that shape and then use your thumb behind it and your fingers to press against the fruit or vegetable to keep it flat. And then as you're slicing, do like five or six slices, move your hand back, five or six slices. There you have Julien. So here guys, got uh, some tomatoes. So I'll show you a few different ways to cut your tomatoes. Uh, very simple ways, just wedges. So again, obviously the tomato's got two sides, usually where the stems bins, the flatter side. So I place that down and then again, keep it stable. Keep your fingers on uh, either side and put your knife through the middle. So again, you've got less chance of cutting yourself and just uh, go through it and then repeat the process and just go down the center. You got some nice tomato wedges. Another way if you're making, I don't know, on a cheeky uh, sandwich, whatever, it's just uh, slice it into rounds. I don't really like my tomatoes too thick, so I try and get them as thin as possible. Again, so what I'm doing there is, obviously I'm keeping that claw that we talked about before, but then I'm using my thumb there to stabilize the fruit so it doesn't uh, slip away. And uh, one last way I'll show you is what's called a tomato concasse. So again, cut it into wedges and then you take the seeds out. And again, with, so you got the tomato flesh there. So again, you could slice it 
nice to go through a salad or another way you could do it is same sort of thing but again dice it so guys I'm now going to show you how to different ways of chopping an onion so first thing I always do is I rarely keep an onion whole when cooking so instead of topping and tailing it and then struggling to peel it I first of all cut it in half and then what I tend to do then is go at an angle on the root so you get rid of the, the hard root bit and then take the top off, square off the top and then you're left with half an onion and it's a bit more manageable to peel and so then I take the skin off and you're left with that. So again, one common way of uh, cutting onions are dice. You'll see a lot of people, well I see a lot of people, keeping an onion like that, scoring it all the way around, going like that and then dicing like that but it can get a bit messy. So what I do is uh, cut it into quarters and then separate it into a couple of layers and then again so you can slice it your stir fries or whatever they're going to cook really quick or another way you dice So again, just basically slice a bit thicker, press them up against the blade of your knife so they're all in the same position. And again, just go along that way. And you have a dice as well. 